Hey guys, I'm going to read something to you very quickly. It's come from John chapter 16. And this is when Jesus was getting ready to be crucified. And he was talking to his disciples about many things, pretty much preparing them for him going back to the Father. So John 16, I'm going to start at verse 4. And it says, But these things I have told you, that when the time shall come, you may know that I told you of them. And these things I said unto you at the beginning, and these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you ask me whither I, where I go. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judge. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Pay attention here, guys. How be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever you, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. The two things that I want to stress on in this video, as I read it, I've read this, this, um, I've read this chapter many times and something the Lord just had just popped off the page. Jesus says in verse seven, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Comforter will not come unto you. All right? Sometimes in our lives, in this case, Jesus was talking about he's come, he has done the work that the Father has told him to do, and he's about to be crucified, and now he's going back to the Father, and now the Holy Spirit will come. But one thing that he says, if I don't go away, he will not come. And so there's purpose in everything that God does. And one of the things I want to talk with you about, the Lord is doing the same thing with us today. There's certain things that if we don't go away from them, if we don't remove ourselves from it, if we don't move away, separate, go away from certain habits, sinful ways, sinful relationships, sinful covenants, the Holy Spirit will not come. Sometimes you may have felt you were close to God at some point in your life, but now you feel distant. But guys, there are times that we may feel distant when we're in our wilderness period, but there's a difference in that. Because in that, even though we may feel like we're alone, we have a knowing and there is a resilience and a tenacity within us there's a peace that we may even have because we know we're in the perfect will of God and this is a walk. We will continue to reach out for the Lord and do the things of God. But there's a difference when you're in this place, it feels very dark, very alone. You feel despondent. You feel misery. You feel a heaviness. You have this feeling of foreboding. There's also places in which you're willfully sinning and living, you know, several different lives you're doing certain things in one arena you're this way another arena you can switch and become something else and then of course you become you know this godly angel for church or when you're in your prayer groups and so what is the lord showed me is if people are continuing to do things their own way this is why they are lost this is why they're not overcoming this is why they have no peace in trials and tribulations because they are not separating themselves 
from certain things. And if you don't separate yourself, the comforter, the Holy Spirit will not come onto you. Very often the Holy Spirit will speak to you, but if you're not hearing him, then after a while you'll quench the Holy Spirit and he will not, he will not give you any further instructions. And so you'll find you'll be walking in your own counsel, being stiff necked. Okay. Just become, a. Uh, uh, a spiritual avalanche that eventually brings destruction. The thing about it is you'll be the avalanche. You'll be at the top starting off with this little thing that turns bigger and bigger, picks up momentum, and then there's this big crash at the bottom of the hill, the bottom of the cliff. Sometimes your breakthrough is not happening. Not that you're being tested, but because you're you may be walking in disobedience. You may be walking in indifference. You have not separated yourself from that man the Lord has told you to separate yourself from. You have not separated yourself from that relationship, that woman that the Lord has told you to remove yourself from. You have not separated yourself from that ministry that the Lord has told you to separate yourself from. You have not separated yourself. You have not gone away from that appetite and those things and the company and the the uh, impulses that you have, you will not. You have not closed the doors that the Lord has told you to close. You have not walked away from those people that the Lord has told you to walk away from in order for the Holy Spirit to truly manifest himself in your life. And sometimes maybe you did, but you got scared and you went back to it. The Lord said, "Is it, it is expedient for you that I go away. It is urgent. It's a must. And here in this chapter, in this particular thing, the Lord wants me to convey to his people, it is expedient for you. It is expedient for us that we separate, that we go away from those things that displeases God. We move ourselves from it. And then the Holy Spirit in your effort to move, to obey, to yield, he will come to you. He will guide you in all truth. He will speak those things that you do not know into your spirit. He will show you things to come. You will not be caught off guard. You will not be left alone. He will reprove you. He will show you the right way. He's our teacher. He's our guide. Contrary to popular belief, our guide and our teacher, teacher is not Men and women, mere mortals, they can be used, we can be used to a certain point to guide and to instruct and to tell people about Jesus. We point them in the right direction, but we are not the head of other people. Everyone must have their own individual relationships with the Lord. So guys, I'm not going to keep this video going any longer. It is expedient that you let go of that thing. It is expedient that you let go of your, uh, your supporting cast. It is expedient for you that you are walking away from what God has told you to walk away from and the things he has told you to leave alone. You have to make that choice. But don't be surprised. When you're stuck and in a rut and going through things. And the most dangerous thing is we have a lot of people who are still operating in their gifts, but they are not, they are separated from God. They're operating in their gifts and their talents and their abilities, but they're separated from God. Why? Because they did not remove themselves. They did not go away from those things that the Lord told them to leave alone. There are many people who have had affairs and they left their husbands and their wives and married their mistress married their boyfriend and girlfriend that was on the side and married someone the lord told them not to do not to marry they've done things they should not have done they did not go away from the gossip they did not go away from the gnashing circle and they destroyed others they are still in these situations and relationships that hampers them they have not shut the door and walk away from people that the lord have told you to leave them alone Toxic people, toxic friendships, toxic relationships, toxic siblings, toxic parents. 
I listened to a man who gave a testimony not too long ago and he was talking about having he the Lord showed him a vision and he was actually in in the pits of hell and he said one thing you realize there there was no time there was no end you weren't thinking about mom or dad because there is no family there is no family there you understand what I mean and so guys it's something that you and I have to definitely look at and think about. Sometimes you're putting family on a pedestal. And while you must honor your mother and your father, love your siblings, if things are happening where they are keeping you from God or they're hurting you so much that you cannot concentrate on God, that every minute you get in a place of peace, they come to harass you and to bring you down and to sow seeds of hurt and pain inside of you. And God says, close the store and leave it alone. Don't sit there looking at, oh, this is mom, this is dad, this is my brother. Are they acting like your mother? Are they acting like your father? Are they acting like your siblings? Sometimes the way that they're acting, you're seeing on the outside, mother, father, brother, sister, uncle, niece, nephew, but their character, they will act like an enemy. They will wound you and blame you for it. And sometimes God calls you from these things. He's telling you, close the doors. Because the thing is, it is to, the whole point is, not so much of the whatever they spoke about and what they said, but the purpose behind it is to wound you, to hurt you, to throw you off course, especially because you love them so much. They can wound you and disable you for a certain period of time and keep you from being able to do the things that God has called you to do. Close the doors. Close the doors. When I spoke about people who broke off their relationships, hurt their husbands and wives and walked away from their children and went and married whoever they want to marry, the person they were having an affair with, what these individuals try to do is throw God on it. And God says, I'm not in this. I'm not in the stink. I'm not in this mess. You disobeyed me. And so what happens is they're wondering, why is it that I'm still going through these things in my marriage? Or why is it your, your marriage seems to be a success, but your ministry seems to suffer? It seems like you're forcing yourself to keep things going because you did not separate yourself from what the Lord told you to separate from. You did not move. You did not remove yourself. You did not go away from the sin and what the Lord told you not to do. And so therefore, for you, you're operating on yourself and not through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not with you. You've disobeyed the Lord. So guys, all I'm going to tell you to do, guys, is just to remember this. It is, it is very expedient for every last one of us to obey the Lord, to remove ourselves, to step away from anything that hinders us, keeps us in sin, keeps us in bondage, or keeps us in a place of doubt and fear. Because if we don't step away from those things, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, will not come near, will not come unto us. And this, my brothers and sisters, we need in these, in these, you know, in these days and times. All right, guys, peace.